Hello everyone. If you guys are new to this channel, I'm Izzy. I like to do a bunch of different types of videos. I do hauls, story times, like basically anything. If you'd like to, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. So today, I'm going to be attending a virtual conference. This conference is called the Girl Up Leadership Summit. If you guys don't know what Girl Up is, it's basically a movement that's dedicated to empowering girls and women all over the world. And every year, they hold this leadership summit. Due to social restrictions right now, they've completely moved the entire conference online, which I think is really cool because anyone from anywhere in the world can access it if they have a stable internet connection, as opposed to something like a physical conference, where you'd have to have the means to be able to travel to the event location and also be able to pay for any hotel accommodations, etc. It's just extremely convenient and I'm glad I got the opportunity to sign up for it. I've never been to a Grow Up conference before, so this is actually my first time like ever experiencing any of of their events. I'm looking forward to being able to network with peers and also with professionals in different industries. There's also a really great lineup of speakers so I'm super excited to hear all of them. I'm also appreciating the fact that I don't have to dress up for this. I'll just be chilling on my bed with my computer watching all the speakers. It'll be a lovely time. This conference goes on for three days so I'll be taking you guys through all of it. I'll film as much as I can without running out of battery or storage. With that being said, this is the the beginning of day one but without forget that we are women it's not only about race it's about our experience like women because a black man don't face the problems i face because i'm a single mom or because i can't walk on the streets at night it feels like there's so much to do it feels like as individuals we, we don't have enough you know impact and i think that we have to understand that it's true all of our individual micro actions that we affect change at a sort of national level and at a global level. I think that's why this moment feels so different. We're seeing that real allyship of people putting their bodies on the lines, consistently showing up to protest, and really being a consistent voice in this moment. And we need that to, to stay that way, not just for the month of June 2020, but for the rest of this year and ongoing, because 400 years of systemic racism cannot be dismantled in a month. And we'll still see some people who are in those echo chambers of pushing back against this radical, beautiful activism. But I think for the most part, we're also seeing these multiracial coalitions showing up and allies actually recognizing their place and not just white allies, but non-black people of color as well. And it's really powerful. You go, yeah. you know how it goes. I've got to control it, yeah. So it's 5.23 right now. The conference has actually been on break since 2 and the break goes on until 8pm. So I've just been spending that time working on my summer classes, relaxing, all of that. I also ate for like the third time today because food is important. So far I'm actually really enjoying the summit. I got to connect with so many people and it's only been the first day. During this little break I've been getting to know the people that I've connected with. Everyone that I've talked to has just been so supportive and empowering and like honestly I love to see it. I'm just super super grateful for everyone that I've talked to and I hope that I can maintain those connections. You know, I was thinking about how differently I act in a virtual conference versus an in-person conference. Like, I'm the type of person that's not the most outgoing. Some people think I am, but I'm honestly not. I get so nervous around people. So that's one thing I'm very grateful for about virtual conferences, the fact that I don't have to actually talk to people face to face. Thus, I feel like I'm able to get way more connections in a virtual conference versus an in-person conference. If you're like me and you get really nervous attending an event with thousands of people, I suggest that you take Take advantage of the virtual conferences that are happening right now because the knowledge and the connections that you get are just so useful and i feel like your level of social skills should not restrict your access to those opportunities so from 10 a.m to 2 p.m there are various panels discussing different types of topics there was one panel that was about advocating for the inclusion of black women in fields such as stem there's this other one that i found particularly interesting it was about allyship and how to be a good ally essentially they touched on topics such as performative activism 
in which I'm sure you guys have been seeing a lot lately, and they talked about how it's good to spread awareness and everything like that, but real change comes from action. So the best thing you could do as an ally is support those who are making change, and also try to make change yourself. Another panel that I was a big fan of was the one about LGBTQ. As someone who is part of the LGBTQ community, I think that it's very important to address things such as representation of our community. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but the title of this summit is We Need to Talk, and I think that is a very relevant statement, especially today, with everything going on. We need to make sure that we're listening to each other and that we're having conversations that might not necessarily be easy to have. For example, with family members or just people who share different values from you. Then we had breakout groups where basically the participants were split into smaller groups and then each of those little groups had their own panel. The one that I chose to go to was about building your personal brand because I think that's very important and I've always been looking for ways to promote and improve my personal brand. The main idea that the whole panel got across was that you have to be authentic in order to have the best personal brand that you could possibly have. And I completely agree with that. That's the number one thing you need to have because people are actually trying to get to know you, not a fake version of yourself. Over the past few years, I've been working on my own personal brand because I want to show people the most authentic version of myself in the best way possible. There are also special messages from people that I really adore, like uh, Michelle Obama, for example. Like, I love her so much. And also Chloe and Hallie. I'm a very big fan of their music. And that breakout session was the last part of the event before we took our break. So now I'm just waiting for the next set of sessions to start. Overall, I'm really satisfied. It's been a great experience, and I'm excited to see how the next few days go. Okay, I will continue to relax before the next session starts. I'll see you guys in a bit. I could do show up and they would just take people and they still are taking people displacing people displacing children so that's something that you know needs to be spoken about that's something that needs to be tackled and something that needs to be in your face because so many more families are being affected and it's more than just what this government is trying to um put out there as a grassroots organizer with no experience before i put the power of social media to work the key to an effective campaign to uh, is to establish a memorable brand from the get-go behind every person is an incredible inner landscape and there are a lot of things that we do not understand about each other and for me mental health is understanding and accepting the unknown and the unknown needs to be translated in a universal language that is really love in action and ways to communicate. A lot of people assume uh, by living in certain environments you are considered to be a free person, but if you're not free here, then, then you're not free. Mental health is forever part of our lives, and I think that's something we don't talk about often enough. We need to be as proactive about our mental health as we are about all of the other forms of health. You can't stop the world from knowing the truth will set you free. Now day two. I didn't really do day one recap because I was absolutely tired and I couldn't bring myself to after. The conference ended at like 10.30 last night and I was really tired because I woke up at like 9 that day. And honestly, that was the earliest I've been up in a while. So some of my favorite highlights from the panels that night is there was this one panel that was specifically about like mental health. And basically the title of it was mental health is public health and I honestly agree a lot with that statement because everyone should be mindful of not only their physical health but also their mental health. These times have definitely been more stressful and taxing on our mental health but we have to make sure that we take good care of it as well. But yeah now it's day two and I'm so ready. And leadership in the face of adversity so the challenges of today don't stop us from achieving our dreams of a better tomorrow. Women's rights are human rights, and human rights are women's rights once and for all. And even though we've come a long way since I was a girl, we still have a lot of work to do. There are laws and policies, biases and cultural norms that hold back women and girls. 
And for many girls, the voices saying, you're not good enough, start early. And especially women and girls of color often have to work twice as hard to be taken half as seriously. I'm in the process of balancing how do I really show up and work on my allyship for, you know, black people, but at the same time honor also my, in many ways, challenging relationships with white privilege and also the racism I've also experienced as an Asian American. So it's very complex. The status quo is easy to excuse and it's hard to break, but it will pull tightest right before snapping. Keep challenging, keep pushing, make them a little uncomfortable because it's only in that discomfort that we actually create the conditions to reimagine our standards, our policies, and our leadership, to move towards real representation and meaningful influence over the structures of decision-making and power. You look at the breadth of the issues we're facing right now, it is easy to get overwhelmed. I understand. So be where you are in the moment. The growth and the change that you're pursuing might not feel like anything day to day. But when you look back, I promise, you will see that it all adds up. Cause I'm here alone in this crowded place. I can get you what my mind is saying. So it's now 3.13 and we're on break until 8. As you guys saw from the clips, there are a bunch of amazing speakers who I really love. And they also had individual workshops, so I attended one about growing your social media presence and just generally how to organize and curate content. That workshop was really useful and I learned about some new tools that I could use on my own social media pages. I'm learning so much through this conference, it's been an invaluable experience for me. So today is the final day of the summit. From the speakers last night, I really enjoyed this one panel that was by Storm Reid and Stephen Curry. It was about the importance of having a strong father figure in your life and just generally surrounding yourself with male allies that can help you and support you in everything that you do. Because in order to make a change and work towards gender equality, we have to include men in the conversation too. In addition to surrounding yourself with strong women, you have to also surround yourself with men that are actively listening to you and actively supporting you, making sure that they're for the same cause as you are and making sure that they're also trying to make change within their communities. This last day is apparently called the day of action. We had to pre-register for it beforehand so we couldn't go workshop hopping like I've been for the past two days. I signed up for the organizing workshop so I'm excited to see what happens. Um, we were talking about India and the fact that there are darker skinned people in India who experience very similar colorism and anti-blackness to what black people um, in, in other parts of the world experience. Almost every movement across history, across countries, across continents have been youth-led and knowing that and recognizing that our power is not by accident, but it's very intentional. It's that youth are energetic and we are able to see the world with fresh eyes and we're able to say, just because something has always existed that way, doesn't mean it has to continue to be that way. But there are a lot of gaps in this story. And what I want us to remember is that history is always written by whoever won. The version of history that they teach us is not the full story. The more accurate version of that history might look a little something like this. We say, how could people let that happen? And we have to remember that people will always be, be fighting for justice. They are just always in the minority. Even if the byproduct of the Civil War was emancipation, it's important to know that that's not what people sought to do. Because then when we go into some of the things that we're coming up and seeing now, like mass incarceration, um, knowing that they never cared about ending slavery or ending racism, will help us understand why we still have racism all these years later. If Reconstruction had been successful, um, we would have a very different America. And just to, to let you all know sort of how serious that is, um, there was more black people in office during Reconstruction than there are now. 
when we pick and choose, we pit communities against one another and we create further divides. So in this case, you know, a hundred years later, we still have a racial divide in the women's rights movement in the US. And it's something that us young people have inherited from those who came before us. And even if it's not something that we created, we still have a responsibility to know the history of what happened and how we can be a part of doing it very different. Even while the US was claiming to be the moral authority and telling the world we are fighting for justice for Jewish communities, they were doing the same thing to AAPI communities and also Mexican communities. Our solidarity depends on us knowing what other communities are experiencing. So as a black woman, I can't advocate against mass incarceration and not know the history of how other communities of color in the US have been mass incarcerated. Immigrants are not stealing jobs. It's employers who are taking advantage of people who are looking for better lives and are taking advantage of them by, by offering up much cheaper work to them and they're doing that. Yes, passing legislation is important, but we also need to make sure that people are safe to engage in this when we do pass the legislation. So sometimes when there's police brutality, you'll hear people say, well, if he wasn't resisting arrest, he wouldn't have been killed. Or if he hadn't ran that red light, or if he hadn't robbed the store. Um, and what we're saying when we say that is that I wanna find a justification for why this happened. And my justification is that if you didn't do the crime, you wouldn't have to do the time. But if the time is a life sentence in prison, or being killed in the street, is that actually an accurate comparison? More than 150 years after the emancipation of slavery, we still have racism. And, and wondering like, why is that? It's not because people were not advocating strongly. It's because we maybe weren't always able to read in between the lines what was happening and build those multicultural coalitions that says, wait a second, the same thing that's happening to Latin American communities and the same thing happening to South Asian communities is the same thing that's happening to Black Americans in the US, is the same thing that's happening to people across the continent. Instead of us all working individually on our own things, we can come together and be stronger together and say, wait, we are so much more powerful when we are united. And when we can say this, you know, racism is a global issue that we are all invested in addressing. A lot of times if our policies were just more empathetic and more thoughtful, we'd be more effective in in addressing different injustices and we wouldn't create more harm. As the mayor though, I have decided that it is time for a change and I'm looking to each of these breakout groups that you are each gonna be a part of to present a new proposal for what public safety can look like in New York City. In, within our communities, we're kind of like all like for ourselves rather than for the community as a whole. So I feel like by building the community, like people will start looking out for each other and people will feel safer. So I signed up for the organizing workshop, which essentially went through the history of how youth have been organizing movements throughout the years and how we can learn from them to start our own movements and continue the ones that have been going on. This workshop had some interactive activities, which they didn't have for the past two days. So it was really nice to see that because I was able to talk with groups in breakout rooms about everything that we were learning from the workshop. So that was a really nice aspect to add in this last day of the summit. Overall, I thought the summit was amazing. I got to speak to so many different girls and women from all over the world. And I also got to hear some great speakers. I gained so many insights throughout these past three days and I'm excited to see how I'll use them in my daily life and make a change. The thing I loved the most about the summit was how inclusive and intersectional it was because you really can't talk about gender equality as a whole without discussing other problems that also overlap with it such as race and disability. I gained so many new connections through this and I'll be sure to keep up with all of them. If anyone is thinking about attending next year or in the following years, I highly recommend it. It's an experience that you'll never forget. With that being said, this is the end of the vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me go through this entire summit, and I hope that you are also able to gain new insights much like I did. If you guys have any questions about the summit as a whole or you just want to say hi, you can drop some comments below. I hope to document more conferences for you guys, possibly in the future sometime. I hope that you guys are all staying safe wherever you're watching this from. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.